Hey guys, Simon here from Simon Says Cycling. I'm excited to have Dirk Barkel here, really dear friend of mine, one of the best triathletes of his generation, fifth fastest time in history, multiple Ironman champion. And today we're going to talk about preparing for a big endurance event. The Ironmans he did were over seven, eight hours long. And there was a specific nutritional plan in place for that. So today I want to pick his brain so we can learn how he best prepared with his nutrition. Now, Dirk, thanks mm. for sharing your knowledge. We really <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you. If we take you back, um, let's, let's talk the last few days, like three, say three days out. Mm. How does it look before an Ironman, an eight-hour intensive race like that? Well, well, in nutrition-wise, it's always a difficult thing. Obviously, mm. everybody's nutrition is a little bit different. So three days before, I'm actually starting to not pay attention to what I eat anymore because it's all about fueling your body. Before, it's like... Making sure in the tapering phase, you know, you don't train that much anymore, so you don't want to eat, overeat too much, and your body is depleted, so you do want to eat. So you have to keep the balance a little bit, because you don't want to put on weight, because race weight is usually like two to three weeks out of the race. And then from the third day onwards to the race, you know, I just take care of my body. I eat a lot of uh, carbs, actually, before I try to reduce the carbs, so I don't put any weight on. And from there on, it's carbo-loading. So especially the last 48 hours is a lot of um, quality food. So I actually reduce, it's a total opposite of how I usually eat. Usually it would be salad and a lot of vegetables in the evening. And now I do the total opposite in those last days just to give my body the, the best possible energy. So I got to fuel up because it's a freaking eight hour day coming up. <laughs> you know? and, and what about electrolytes? Like, Are you adding extra salt, extra electrolytes in the days before? I usually don't do a, a loading phase, but I make sure there's always salt. I, I do like to eat salt, and as an athlete, you sweat a lot, so I make sure there's there's always a little bit salt, but not a plant uh, a build up loading phase or anything. But uh, what I do when it gets close to to the race, especially the the night before, that's when I also start having uh, an energy drink instead of having a glass of water, because you want to have all the possible energy that you can get. And then in race morning, I always have. All my, my, my bottles prepared that I'm going to stuff on my bike, for instance, and or that I put in the special needs bag that we have on the marathon course. And I also prepare one bottle that I'm going to use in the morning when I walk around, set up my bike, the race number, because that's extra energy again, plus there's electrolytes. So it will be a long day, a lot of sweating, and that's why that's the preloading. And what's the, the dinner, say, the night before? What kind of dinner are you eating? What's the main the main food that you're eating? Uh, I mean, based on carbs. Everything is based on carbs, but easy digestible carbs. So even the guys that are not gluten-free usually go gluten-free in the last 48 hours because it's just better for, for your digest, uh, digestive. What do you call it? digestive system. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we used to eat a lot of pasta, right? But since then, if, if you know, I used to be gluten free, but then I changed it around a little bit and just focus on rice because it gives you the same. But it, it's it's important that it's carbohydrates. So, no salad, no vegetables. You can add some, you know, for, for guys that eat meat, you can add some chicken in it or just make it tasty. Not so many ingredients. Just have it very simple. So it's not gonna be a great dinner. You know, it's all about fueling, and it doesn't matter what it is. But it needs to be very easy on the stomach. Um, therefore, I never had uh, stomach issues during the race because you just, uh, you know, if you eat a lot of fiber, you know, mm -hmm. your body's working hard to digest it. You got to go to the bathroom several times, mm -hmm. and you know that costs time and time. Yeah. <laughs> so very clean and easily digestible. No, mm -hmm. no uh, fiber, not heavy meat. No, proteins, definitely not meat. Like it's like yeah, thirty-six yeah. hours for digestion, yeah. and yeah. I haven't eaten meat in a, in a long, long time. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you need it, but if you have vegetables, make sure they're cooked and just easy on the stomach. That's the and key. And the morning of the breakfast, what what does that look like? It's also very simple to digest. Usually, I don't eat white bread, but on this case, I eat white bread or I do uh, milk rice that I do the night before and let it soak. Also, not in milk because there's a lot of lactic acids. So I use coconut milk or mm -hmm. almond milk. Uh, you you can have a banana. You know, you you just squeeze it with your fork, mix it in for a little bit more taste. Um, Honey is very high in uh, carbohydrates, so white bread with honey, Sim simple stuff. You, you do have to eat quite a bit in the morning, so if, you know, and you shouldn't drink too much coffee because it's, it's, a, it's a diuretic, so you got to go to the bathroom and you lose a lot of water, right? But if you used to drink coffee, then it's good to, to wake up and get a little kick and get going in the morning. But, you know, since you're nervous already before the race, mm -hmm. you don't need it because yeah, of that. It. 
So. You, you were telling me a formula you used to, to know how many carbohydrates you're going to be taking on every hour. During the race, it's absolutely right. Uh, let's talk metrics. So let's say I'm 75 kilograms. Uh, that means I'm using 75 grams of carbs per hour. So it's an eight hour race. Our problem in triathlon is you're swimming, you know, and before the swim, you, you, you cannot eat really. So let's say the last 45 minutes, you cannot really eat. Then you swim for an hour, you, you have no chance to eat. So you deplete your, your, your level of, of energy already. So that's why 75 grams of carbs per hour. But for, don't forget, it's important to drink fluid then there's energy and then there's electrolytes. So those three together, then there's solid foods and then there are gels. But imagine eight hours in gels, it's just it's impossible. Not Normal gel has maybe 25 grams. So if you do that three gels per hour, you need a whole backpack full of gels. So um, yeah. what kind of solid food are you eating? Just bars, kind of, uh, bars, yeah. you know, it, it kind of depends in what conditions you're racing. Um, you know, if it's Hawaii, it's, it's 95 degrees and it's very humid. So you need to have something that you can actually eat and you have to practice that <laughs> because uh, you know, you're obviously sweating, you, you, you get dizzy, you're, you're exhausted, but you still have to chew. And the longer the race goes, the, the less likely it becomes that you can eat solids. So mm -hmm. I try to eat solids as long as I can and definitely for the first part of the bike and usually till like three quarter or till the end of the bike section, which is a four hour, four hour 15 already. And then you switch to gels because on the run you cannot absorb anything else really. So no, no real protein, no fat. I know there's a trend these days for some athletes to you know fuel more with fat. It sounds like mm. you never really used that in your career. I tried it before because science says you you need less uh, 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 liquid actually to to get the energy out, so you wouldn't have to drink so much. But but the fat is also a little harder on the stomach, so I have not. Uh, I mean, I tried it out, but uh, it didn't really work. The difference what I did was I, I tried to play around with the fructose because there's glucose and fructose and you can absorb a little bit more when your body gets used to fructose and you can absorb it through your liver and you can have more energy available. But I don't know the exact percentage, but a lot of people don't uh, have a healthy relationship with fructose and there, there, there are some companies out there that sponsor some races and then you get a, let's say a high five or something and you drink them as fructose and a lot of people get stomach issues. So you want to make sure that you know what you're taking in and you practice your your race nutrition basically before. Yeah. Awesome, really good, good, good stuff. Hmm. Really appreciate you sharing those tips, sharing your knowledge of 20 plus years of racing. I know you have mm -hmm. a new book, The Art of Triathlon Training, just came out, sharing more of these uh, great tips and secrets. <laughs> so uh, check that out yeah. and uh, hope you appreciate it, guys. All Thank the best you. with your cycling and triathlon racing.